Stanley. That's me. Well, you weren't in battalion headquarters, Lieutenant. What? Believe all this? <laughs> all right, tell Sergeant Saunders to take over. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Hanley reporting, sir. Special orders came down from division on you, Hanley. You had to proceed at once. To the cocktail lounge at the Hotel Savoy in London. I don't quite get the joke, sir. There isn't any joke. That's where you're to go. And I haven't got the slightest idea why. Selmer Production. Sorry, old boy, but I'm afraid you've got your facts wrong. The standard German infantry regiment consists of 15 infantry companies. No, 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 no. Twelve. Innkeeper. Look, I just did 2,000 words for Colliers on the infantry man. All the same, I'll wager you're wrong. Uh, pound? You are faded. There's an infantry officer. Take his word for it? Certainly. Get out your wallet. We're trying to settle a bet, Lieutenant. Do you happen to know how many companies a German infantry regiment has? Sure, 15. <laughs> well, you're sure? Positive. One pound, please. <laughs> thank you. Oh, and thank you too, Lieutenant. Goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> Can't see how I blew it. I just wrote an article for Colliers and I... Hey, you uh, have been with the shooting war, haven't you? When'd you get back? Recently. What outfit were you with? 
U.S. Army. You don't have to clam up with me, soldier. I'm a correspondent. Credentials up to my eyebrows. Ed Slocum, Washington Press Service. Nice to meet you, Mr. Slocum. So? What outfit are you with? When'd you get back? Going furlough, sick leave, or what? I got it. You were wounded at the breakthrough of Saint Lo. Next thing I know, you'll want about a pound on it. Funny. See you around, soldier. <laughs> Lieutenant Hanley, please. Lieutenant Hanley, please. Well, that's me. There's a telephone call for you, sir. End of the bar and to your left. Thank you. <laughs> Lieutenant Hanley. This is your contact, Lieutenant. You are traveling under special orders 107, headquarters, 21st Infantry Division. Date, 28 October. Is that correct, sir? That's right. Come directly to number 45, Garden Court, flat number 5. No. the door, please. Good evening, Lieutenant. I hope you'll excuse the surroundings, but we find cheap, unfurnished rooms ideal for preliminary conferences. We? Oui. Chief Intelligence. My name is Williams. Sit down, please. There's a photograph on the table, Lieutenant. Would you kindly look at it? You recognize the people? Yes, it's the Barol family. I understand the young man in the picture, Raymond Barol, was your roommate at college in the States. That's right. He was an exchange student. After graduation, he uh, took me back to his home in France for a vacation. Tell me, Lieutenant, did you see much of Raymond's father, Dr. Barreau, during your summer stay? Quite a bit. He, uh, he taught physics at the Sorbonne. He was home almost every weekend. We used to go fishing every chance we got, Raymond and his father and I. I helped him with his English in the evenings. Then you would say that you and Dr. Barreau, considering the difference in your ages, were good friends? That he liked you? Yes. That he would trust you? I guess so. Dr. Barreau is an important physicist today, Lieutenant. Vital to the war effort. In what way? In many ways. The Germans, of course, want him to work for them. He never knew that. No, as a matter of fact, he's quite anxious to work for the Allies. Of course, he can't manage that till he gets out of occupied France. Which brings us to you, sir, and the reason for your presence here. Do you follow me? Not quite. A month ago, Lieutenant, we contacted the French underground resistance fighters and set up a scheme to get Dr. Barreau and his family out of the country. It failed abysmally. Was Dr. Barreau caught? No, he got away by the skin of his teeth. What happened? We're not sure. Somehow German intelligence was on to us. Perhaps they deciphered a radio message. Perhaps there was a double agent within the Maquis itself. At any rate, a week ago, we learned where we can contact Dr. Barreau. It's a village outside Epineau, not too far from the Swiss border, but still in occupied France. Now, we want to get him out of there, and we need your help. 
What can I do? Dr. Moreau is skeptical now of whom we can trust. Therefore, the go-between, the one who gets into the French village disguised as a Frenchman and contacts him, must be someone Dr. Barreau is certain is luring him into the hands of the Gestapo. Someone whose integrity is beyond question. Like an old family friend who also happens to be an American army officer? Precisely. Will you help us? No. Why not? Well, I'm not a spy, Mr. Williams. I I'm an infantryman. I don't know the first thing about spying. You don't have to. An American agent will be your teammate. A chap who's made countless jumps behind enemy lines. Jumps? You parachute in? Believe me, sir, it's safer than walking. Well, what about getting out? Shall we discuss exfiltration once we know you're willing to infiltrate? The plan itself is really quite simple, you know. The Marquis will take you to Dr. Barreau's daughter, Marie. She, in turn, if convinced you're a legitimate contact, take you to her father. Why Marie? She's just a child. Why not Raymond? Raymond Burrow is dead, Lieutenant. He was killed by the Gestapo during our last attempt to get his father out. I'm sorry. Proves how wrong he can be. Raymond was sure he was going to be the world's greatest architect. All right, Mr. Williams, I'll do it. Why? For sentimental reasons? You can't breathe life back into Raymond Burrow, you know. I didn't think I could. Lieutenant Hanley, this is exceptionally hazardous duty. You'll have only the small Mackey group in the village and the man who jumps with you for help. Do you still want to go? I do. And my reasons, Mr. Williams, are personal. Of course. Welcome to the fold, Lieutenant. And now I should like you to meet the American intelligence officer who will go in with you. What outfit did you say you were with again, Lieutenant? You sure make a good newspaper man. Foreign correspondent is the term, pal. Unpleasant correspondent is the full title, I believe. A realistic touch, don't you think? He fooled me. <laughs> well, you better get cracking, Ted. I'd say start them at the moles. Well, they're little people that live in an attic. They fit agents out from head to foot, past to present. Gents, Gestapo headquarters stationery, watermark included. For a bloke, go to Hamburg. Fantastic. Oh, Tar. That's one of the best things I've done. Yeah, by the way, uh, what will you chaps be wanting? French villagers' credentials. Both of us. Oh, is that all? Righto. He was in jail for counterfeiting six months ago. He'll outfit us with the Frenchman's normal pocket papers. Police identification cards, photos of the family, that sort of thing. And here, a recent love letter from a wife, a girlfriend. And for a Frenchman, sometimes both. Actually, of the five steps in turning out a agent, recruiting, training, authentication, dispatching, communication, this one, authentication, is probably the most important. An agent working in a occupied country must wear the clothes of that country, down to the buttons and the way they're sewn on. Americans, for example, saw the one little holes crisscross. Europeans in parallel. You don't miss a trick, do you? Mm -hmm. Can't afford to. We almost lost an agent in Paris last week because a stormtrooper noticed that his weekend pass, he was posing as a Wehrmacht soldier on leave, had been initialed in pen rather than red pencil the way the others were. Well, how did he get away with it? Bluff. 
He said he'd initial it himself so he'd keep a date with a gorgeous girl. Sie sollten dieses prachtvolle Mädchen sehen. Sie hat eine Figur wie Venus. It was you. Now back to you. Since you're only going to be with us for this one operation, we're going to skip the usual agent's training. Schools in radio, cryptography, microfilm sabotage, language refinement, the whole kit and caboodle. And concentrate on first, physical authenticity, second, parachute jumping. When does that start? Tomorrow. Takes a week. I'll be in Lisbon, meantime. My bureau chief wants a thousand words on, believe it or not, intrigue in neutral capitals. Your cover's real, then. You are a writer. Mm -hmm. Is that what you did before the war, journalism? No, no, I was, uh... They won't laugh. Oh. I was a language teacher at a girls' finishing school. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Come on, we got more to do. Uh, say, wait a minute. You know, we're going to occupy France. I don't speak French. Hmm? C'est bonjour. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Bonsoir. See how fast you learn? Come on. Oh, just the chaps I'm looking for. Trouble? I'm afraid so. Item one comes from our agent in Frankfurt. Net closing around Barreau. Urgent, you make contact at once. Item two, Washington. Barreau, work vital current effort. I suggest you jump in tomorrow night, gentlemen. What about my parachute training? Well, looks like you jump first, learn later, Lieutenant. Uncomfortable? Inside and out. Let's run it down again. Okay. How many Maquis can we expect when we touch down? Three. Two men and a woman. Their signal to us? A hand clicker. We move toward the sound. Right. What if you find the Maquis but not me? Say I'm killed in the fall or get lost in the woods? The Maquis take me to wherever Marie Barol is hiding. She, we hope, in turn takes me to her father. Question, is Marie living under her real name now? No. Only the Marquis we meet will know who she really is. And only she knows where her father is. Right. Occupied France. Is it always like this when you cross over? No. Sometimes the Luftwaffe chases us. Never complain about a muddy foxhole again. Target, minus 10. Isn't this about the time when you ask, uh, are you scared, Lieutenant? Mm -mm. That comes later.
ils sont arrivés Allez-y, allez-y Nous savons qu'il est blanchisseuse, tu sais tout. Est-ce qu'elle habite sur nous Oui. Tu as tout right. Je ne sais pas où le docteur Barol est, mais je sais où nous pouvons trouver Marie. Elle travaille comme une Les Germans ne savent pas où elle est Non. J'entends quelqu'un. C'est rien, c'est rien. Allez-y sur la route. Avec l'Américain, allez-y, allez-y. D'accord. Il dit pour vous et la fille de. Elle parle anglais. We wait at the road with George. George, c'est nous. Est-ce qu'ils sont déjà finis? Non, pas encore, mais bientôt. The Germans have forbidden us to be outside the village after dark. Pas toi encore. Allez le dire aux autres. Halt Leuchten Sie diese Fläche Sehen Sie etwas Ja, ich glaube, da bewegt sich etwas. Das Beste ist, wir sehen nach. Sie bleiben hier sitzen. Komm, steigen wir aus. S'il vous plaît. Euh, comment Votre papier, monsieur. Oh, euh, mais oui, ça joue. C'est d'accord. Hein? C'est pas le bench, c'est pas ça. Allez-vous-en. Oui, oui. Et maman Viens ici. Votre jaquette. Allez. Va-t'en. Dépêche-toi. Merci. Schönes Mädchen. Haben Sie nichts anderes im Kopf als Weiber? Un moment, monsieur. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Est-ce que nous sommes seuls? C'est vous qui Oh, qui Nous avons venu vous prendre votre père de France. 
I'm an American intelligence officer. We want to take you and Dr. Birol to England. Uh, and you are also an intelligence officer? No. I'm a lieutenant in the infantry. I was sent so that you'd know you were not being deceived into... Speak more slowly, please. I I've spoken no English so long now. Of course. I was sent so that you would know you are not being tricked into showing your father's hiding place to the Germans. I see. And do you believe? Where is your father? Beneath the floor we're standing on. I would not trust anyone after what happened, even the Maquis. Marie has made many trips away from here to give the illusion I was hiding elsewhere. I would have been captured long ago if it were not for her resourcefulness. The Marie I remember was not very resourceful. She was a little girl with pigtails and a dirty face. I suggest we have this conversation when we reach Switzerland. We have to leave tonight, you know. Just what? Tonight? But that's impossible. Why? Well, my notes, my work, oh, hundreds of formulae. I could not go without them. Uh, it, it represents ten years of research. Where are the notes? Hidden here in the village. I was afraid of capture the night I arrived. I had not stopped running for 12 hours. So I, I hid my notebook the first chance I had. I... Where exactly is the notebook hidden, Dr. Barol? In the cafe in the village. Uh, what cafe? What's the name of it? Uh, Le Chien Rouge. It belonged to a loyal resistance fighter. Uh, he since was killed. Today the cafe is owned by a collaborateur. Now, where in the cafe are the notes hidden? In the wine cellar. In the far corner are ledger books. My notebook is below them. What time does the cafe close, Marie? Whenever the last German soldier leaves. It is an entertainment center. Sometimes they drink until morning. Some nearby landmark, easy for you to reach, for us to find. What about coming back here? The sentries we passed, coming and going once a night is all right. Twice. Could arouse suspicion. Where can we meet? L'église? The church? Is it open at night? Oh, oui. All right. We'll pick you up there, inside. I'll bring nothing that could arouse suspicion if you're stopped by a patrol. No extra clothes, money, or food. You understand? Bientôt, Papa. Plus de bottes, Allemand. So, no more German boots. Wachterlösung. Halt! Wachterlösung auf Posten Nummer 1. Austreten. Sie die ganze Nachbarschaft. Zu Befehl, Herr Obergefeiter. Eintreten. Rechts umkehrt. Vorwärts, Marsch. Okay. The Marquis are in a garage around the corner. Tell them where and when we rendezvous with the Burroughs. I'll see you back here in an hour. Where are you going? Take a walk. You're going to pick up that notebook. What are you going to do, just walk in that wine cellar like you belong there and pick up the book? That's usually the best way to do it. Isn't getting Dr. Burrell out enough without having to get the notebook? No. You heard what he said about ten years of work? You're asking for it. Why? Why does an infantry officer go charging into a town full of German machine guns? It's your job, that's why. 
This is mine, period. I'll look for you here in an hour. If I'm late, you go without me. So long. Bonsoir, monsieur. No. Ich 
Was wollt ihr, du Gestapo? Je ne sais pas. Warum gehen alle weg? Ich habe keine Ahnung, ich glaube, es hat irgendwas mit der Kirche zu tun. Mit der Kirche? Die Kirche. Sie wissen über uns. Wir gehen nicht da, um zu beten. Who did you tell about where we were to meet the Berolds? Just the three of them. Lily, George, and Andre. You think one of them could be a traitor? Did you tell anybody else? Of course not. Then one of them is a traitor. the parole's place from here alone yes and you also find the field we landed get the paroles out of the field i'll join you just as soon as i can dope out who we can trust in the marquee and who we can't why bother we've got the notebook we've got the paroles let's go go where we need the marquee those we can trust to get us to switzerland we never make it without them especially with an old man and young girl along well how do we find out who we can trust that, my friend, is what Mr. Williams would call a cracking good question. I'm going to get to each one of them separately. Andre, Lily, Georges. Tell them that the rendezvous place has been changed to a different spot. That I'll pick them all up ten minutes before rendezvous time. Mm -hmm. Place. Church is too public. Even late at night, there are people there. My mistake. I'll pick you up in ten minutes. We'll drive to the garage. Pick me up? You have a car? The German officer can do anything. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Is back there? Oh no, en face, tout droit. Why are you stopping the car? Oui, pourquoi? Where do we rendezvous with the Barrows, Lily? The garage? André, où est le rendez-vous? Derrière l'hôtel. Behind the hotel? No, the garage. Où est le rendez-vous, George? À l'entrepôt. The warehouse? Behind the hotel, the garage? Why does each one give a different answer? Because I told each one of you a different place. Why? Where are the boroughs? Which place? None of them. 
Are you mad? I know that one of you is a traitor. No. Yes. To prove it, I told each one of you you were meeting the Baroles at a different place, knowing that the traitor in turn would tell a Gestapo. Now I'm going to drive to the church, the original rendezvous. There we'll climb the bell tower where we can see all around. See where the Gestapo goes. See who has given us away. J'ai dit à chacun de vous que nous rencontrerions les barreaux en un doigt différent. Parce que je pense que l'un de vous est un traître. Celui qui est coupable aura déjà parlé à la Gestapo. En ce moment, j'irai à l'église. Là, nous monterons au clocher pour voir où la Gestapo va. Et qui est la traître. Okay, let's go to church. I don't think he can go on without rest. He doesn't have to. We're in Switzerland now. Uh, and beyond the range of rifle fire from the border. Oh, merci, oh, the bon Dieu. Now, oh. why don't we rest first, huh? We'll talk later. <laughs> ah, nice place, Switzerland. I was thinking about Lily. What made the girl a traitor? Who knows? Love, hate, money, stupidity, loyalty to the other side. You sound as if it doesn't matter to you. I can't afford to let it. If I did, I don't think I'd go back in again. You are going to go back in, aren't you? Not before I buy you a drink in London. I'll take you to the Foreign Correspondence Club, pal. I got an expense account there. <laughs> I'd forgotten about that, Ted Slocum. And I know something else you forgot about, too. That uh, muddy war in Normandy. Anyhow, that drink in London comes first. Mm -hmm. 